Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another Trains with Shane episode. What have we got going on the disgusting workbench today? Well, I've had this stuff kicking around for a while. And you guys know I like DCC and sound when available, even though it can be pretty cantankerous in the, when it comes to end scale. What I've got is Proto Throttle from Iowa Scaled Engineering. I've had it out of the box once to look at it, and I put it back in the box and on the shelf it went, and I haven't messed with it since, and it's probably been about a year. I also have a packet of other bits and pieces from them to make this work with the DCC++ EX setup that I typically use. You guys have seen it. SCRP client on the iPhone. But I wanted to finally get off my booty and get the stuff working. So we're going to see if we can figure it out. The DCC++ EX station works off of a wireless. And it's plugged in wirelessly. I say plugged in, but it's wirelessly connected to my home network. And... I can use any wireless throttle that will connect to Wi-Fi to connect to the IP address of this base station. It works a little different than, say, an NSE or a Digitrax um, setup would, but thankfully Iowa Scaled Engineering, who makes the Proto Throttle, makes this package of things which should make it compatible with our, our setup here. So what do we got? What are we about to drop off the end of the world here? Alright, looks like this is a dusty. Like I said, it's been kicking around a while. Looks like a USB, micro USB power adapter with a, a toggleable, toggleable, is that even a word, a phrase? On off, looks like it is 5 volt, 2.5 amp output. This would probably be perfect for running a Raspberry Pi. Looks like we have a regular USB to micro USB adapter. Let me set those aside. anti-static bag I'm just dropping things all right let's see what that was all right nothing else in the bag looks like we have a SD to micro SD adapter and a 3D printed bracket that holds our stuff here looks like we've got a Raspberry Pi 0 W here if I'm not mistaken let's It looks like a lot like a Raspberry Pi Zero W. It's probably exactly what it is. Oh, yep, sure enough. Raspberry Pi Zero W. So this does have built-in wireless and Bluetooth. Um, I think this is a single core, probably one gig, two gigs of RAM, on a 3D printed base with an Iowa Scaled Engineering specific PCB. There's the higher scale engineering thing. Looks like we've got resistors and diodes and probably something either wireless or logic chip related. I'll bet you it's a Zigbee or Z-Wave adapter because I think that that's the protocol that the throttle itself uses. Sturdy little bracket. 
I mean, you can see it's just simply printed, 3D printed with black PLA. I have found this stuff to have a pretty high, like, shear point. It's it's very, very rigid, but when it, it doesn't really flex, it tend, they tend to snap. But it's kind of like carbon fiber in that regard. There's no give to it. Very good stuff, though. Looks like we have an instruction manual. Looks like that little micro cable is to connect the uh, the receiver to the Pi. Let's get into our other box here. Here is the proto throttle proper. There that is. Let's see your standard notch eight, reverser, air brake, bell, lights. The screws are not in it because I've never put batteries in it. Let's see. Looks like there's some optional, probably 3D prints you can get from Scotty's. Not worried about that just yet. Looks like also in the box we have a lanyard. Which you clip onto the bottom of the protothrottle. Various stuff to drop on the floor. Let's see my invoice. Y'all don't need to see that. This looks like, I mean, it's elastic. Maybe that's a, a hand loop where you can stick your hand through the back. Proto throttle instruction manual. We're not going to worry about the proto throttle itself until we get the interface set up. So let's have a look at these instructions real quick. Okay, so it looks like we need to pull the Raspberry Pi card, put it in the adapter, put it in our computer, continue without scanning, open the wireless config, SSID and password, that's going to be for our Wi-Fi network, because we're going to use ESU cab control style. And this, obviously, if you have a Digitracks or a home network. We may do the um, the home network one. I am not sure which one of these we're supposed to use, whether it's the ESU cab control one, because this is going to connect via 802.11 which is why it's on a Raspberry Pi Zero W, to, uh, it could probably connect to this directly, but I'm, I'm not using this in its normal form. The wireless chip on DCC++ EX, in my case, is not acting as a base station itself. It is acting as an ad hoc wireless bridge to my home network. I could use this just as a wireless point to connect the um, SC, SCRP and I think in that case we would do this right here but I think we're going to try the home network setup. If not we can always change it. Let's see advanced options. Looks like there's a optional Thing to hard code the IP address. Okay, well, that's what we're going to have to do. Let me do a little jump cut here real fast because I need to get the adapter, the card, 
and I'm going to have to find my USB to SD card adapter so we can get this over on my computer. So sit tight and I'll bring you guys right back. Alright guys, this is my first screen recording capture attempt so I hope this comes out. But we've got our um, USB device loaded into our machine here. Here are the files that are present on the SD card. If you get a pop-up on your machine that says format drive, do not do that. You want to hit cancel on that. The reason that might happen is because the Raspberry Pi uses a Linux based file system. It's either EXT or something like that. Windows in its default form doesn't know how to handle that and it thinks that it's a blank disk and needs to be formatted. But in this case this is not something that you want to do. So moving on, we've got our wireless config.txt file here, which is the file that tells us to open. And it wants us to uncomment out the section that we're going to use and enter in our um, our information. Now uncomment, what does that mean? So in Linux we'll use Linux as an example because that's where it's used most often. When there's a configuration file there will be text that is in there as informational or not to be used as part of the code file. Um, you see what I've highlighted here and you see the hashtag or the pound symbol or the number sign or whatever you want to call it at the beginning of that line that is called commenting the line out, meaning that whatever program you're using that's accessing this file will ignore that because the line is just meant as a comment or informational. So for these things you don't want to put a comment in there. <coughs> Excuse me. So you'll see these lines here do not have the hashtags or the pounds before them reason being is because this is what the um, the system wants to use for the config. If you notice down here below the Digitrax and the home network examples are commented out. So that means that the program is going to want to use this only. I'm going to comment these out again by just pushing shift 3 and uh, commenting these out. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to remove from the bottom here. And what I'm going to do is like the um, the stuff said, I am going to put my wireless network information in here, then I'm going to save the file, and then I'm going to pop it into my Pi and see if this whole thing will work. And if it doesn't, because I suspect that we may have to use the one up here at the top, but we'll see what happens. So I will bring you guys right back once I get all that done. One thing I forgot to mention, guys, is that before you pop this card back out and pop it in the Raspberry Pi that's connected to the ESU Wi-Fi link, you need to come down here to Protothrottle Config as well. Because you need to select which control system that you're going to be using. In this case, you have options of ESU Cab Control, GMRI, Y-Throttle, Engine Driver, or Digitrax LNWI. So this was defaulted to ESU and like we mentioned using the comments, the hashtags, the pound, keys, number symbols, we commented that one out and activated by removing the pound symbol LNWI here. Also, if you were setting this up, and you'll have to know this information, whether you are setting this up through a Wi-Fi link 
or you are setting it up to access directly on the DCC++ EX base station as an access point itself, you'll have to know the IP address of that. And this is what my IP address of my base station is and the server port, which is 2560 in this case. I think you can set this port to anything that you want to as long as it matches what the DCC++ is configured for. So you need to save that file as well, just like the wireless config. I forgot to mention that on the earlier section. So save that file, close out, then pop the, ca the card out, put it in your Pi, boot the thing up, and then I'll see you guys back over on the disgusting workbench. All right, back over onto the disgusting workbench. We've got our micro SD card loaded into the Raspberry Pi. Our DCC++ EX system is already turned on. Let me turn the Pi on. Get you guys over here to watch the um, startup sequence there. Above the blinking, below the blinking red LED, there will be some blue LEDs that come on in turn. We should see the top two come on. Okay, there's one, there's two. Okay, now the third one will come on once we activate our remote. right here it's off wake it up green blinking LED we have our number already programmed in so far so good Let's see Ah, went past it. There we go. I would say that's a successful test, guys. For more information on DCC++ EX, DIY and Digital Railroad has a good video on that, as does, I think it's Tom's Trains and Things. I think it's Tom. I don't think it's Ron. Let me go over here and take a look. See? I don't know why I can't remember his name. I watch his darn videos all the time. Tom's Trains and Things. Tom Kovichak. Yeah, that's it. 
Sorry, I had a brain dead moment there, guys. So yeah, you'll watch those guys' videos on how to set up and install DCC++ EX on an Arduino. And hopefully my video on setting up the ESU Wi-Fi bridge to connect to it has helped you guys. If it did, or if you found it interesting at all, give me a thumbs up, write a comment. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel, and I will see you on the next one. Until then, be safe, and I will see you soon.